Alright, and welcome to my channel. Uh, as you may know, I'm pretty famous for doing how-tos and how-not-tos, and doing all sorts of things motorcycle-related. So today, we're actually going to be installing this starter switch, or start slash kill switch. So if you want to learn how to do this correctly, stay tuned. Right after the intro, we're going to get into it. Right, so the intro wasn't long at all there. Uh, so today we're going to be walking you through the process on how to install this kill switch right here that we have in our hand. It is a blue anodized little push button kill slash start switch. We're going to be wiring it as a start switch on my bike. Um, it's a pretty simple process, so you're just going to need a few tools. So let me get those really quick and I'll show you what you need. Guys, so I went and grabbed a few tools for you guys to show you what you're going to need on this install and to hopefully make it as easy as possible. So first thing you're going to need are some wire cutters, crimps. Uh, you usually, I like the ones that have the actual cutter inside of them and I can strip the wires with pretty much ease on um, my numbers here. And I have, if you have any buck connectors or crimps, you can usually just kind of crimp it down. So you need a pair of these. This is, this is number one thing. Number thing, if you have one thing, it'd be this. Two, you wanna have a little bit of this. So a little bit of electrical tape goes a long way, especially when you're doing electrical stuff. So always keep a little electrical tape and it is gonna come in handy with this install. Now, another thing that I like to do instead of use butt connectors is I kinda like to twist the wires together and fold them over. And I'll, I'll show you that a little bit later in this video and how we get that started. And uh, I, I usually kind of prefer to do that a little bit and I like to use this shrink wrap here or the heat shrink and cover it over and then I'll wrap that up with electrical tape and that's what we'll do. Now another thing, since we're using the heat shrink, <laughs> a big old toy here. Yeah, the heat gun. So the heat gun for shrink wrap, gold, honestly. It's better than using a lighter and I advise everyone to go get one of these. You can probably get one at your local hardware store for like 30, 40 bucks. So definitely need. So now you know what you need to install this kill switch, which is only two wires and it's not really that hard. Uh, we're gonna get to it right now. All right guys, so back at it again. So what I've done so far is I've just pretty much pulled my headlight off my bike and I've kind of loosely taken that starter switch that you saw me hold up. So I've loosely taken it and bolted it very loosely so I can still move it to my actual handlebar itself. There's two pieces now on the starter switch that go together. It's just like any other clutch cable or sorry, clutch perch. It's like your throttle cable. It's got two pieces that come together and two bolts. Pretty simple. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't have to really show you that, but anyways, I'm gonna give you a little quick view of it and kind of So this is what I'm talking about. So as you can tell right here, this is the, this is the switch and there's two pieces, two individual pieces. This is an Allen head and a hex nut right here. And it simply just screws on. So there's second piece right here and top piece is one piece. Pinch them together put your bolts through and then run your nut in and that's it. And it is on the handlebar. You want to make sure it's in a good location where you can reach it and activate your button. And I can. So now we're going to get to the rest of the part in the wiring. I'm going to put y'all back on a little spot I have so that uh, we can get to this, huh? So next thing we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be cutting these two wires. So I already know, what my actual wires are is which one's the power and which one uh, loops into the star solenoid. Usually it really doesn't matter because mo most of these switches don't push power one way or the other until the switch is closed and that is when the button is pressed down and that is when the circuit opens and the power runs through both sides and activates. So it usually doesn't really matter, but we know which one's which. So we're gonna clip these wires. So let me get these tools really quick to clip these wires with. We're just gonna take these, my little trusty wire cutters, and we're gonna clip it near the base of this switch. Boom. Bye bye old switch. Actually, I'll have to pick that up in a minute. Kinda of fell into a bad spot. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do on these here wires is I'm gonna figure out which gauge they are. I'm pretty sure 
they are a 18, 16. Pretty sure they're a 16. We're gonna get a little space on them. And we're gonna pull. Ooh, definitely a 16. That worked out perfectly fine. Yeah, definitely a 16. Now, what I've done here is I've left myself a little bit of wire showing. So a good a good chunk right here, as you can tell. It's probably about uh, maybe a little bit of three quarters of an inch is what I have showing, and you're gonna you're gonna find out why. So a lot of people like this way or not. A lot of people use butt connectors and other versions, and this is just the better way that I found to do it. So on this stock cable, it actually comes with two wires, as you can tell. One has a black and white line which we have a red and white, and we have a red, and here's a black. So a lot of these bikes and a lot of other things come with these little butt connectors that I don't know why because half the bikes never actually have them. So we're just gonna do what we did a second ago, and we're going to cut these off. So we don't need these. All right, and I think this is a little bit bigger wire actually. Yep, just a little bit. I think this is an 18 gauge wire. There we go. All right, guys. So now both of our wires are bare. And we're going to match these up here in just one second, but I'm going to get something really quick because I want to show you how to do this correctly and the right way the first time so that you don't have to come back and do it over and over again. First things first, let's get this straight. The shrink wrap is stinking awesome. So what you wanna do with this, just to make sure that you get it done the right way, is you want to actually twist your wires, as if you were gonna put them on something, and then you want to feed this shrink wrap just over the wire. Because when you twist these wires together, you're gonna to be able to, you'll want to be able to get a hold of this shrink wrap and it actually seal on the wire right so try and do this all right and as you can tell i now have two pieces of the heat shrink on here i think there's actually another piece that came with this wire stock which is really nice actually all right so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna match these wires up so we're gonna do this white with red line with the white with black or black with white line so what you're going to do is you're actually going to take these two wires and you're going to spin them together now i know a lot of people don't like this way i have never actually had an issue with this way i think this is honestly the right way as long as you do it correctly so spin the wires nice and tight together and then there it is and what we're going to do is we're actually going to lay it flat, just like that, so that the wires are nice together. And we're going to pull this shrink wrap right over that so that it perfectly conceals it. Give it a little bit of a tug, and that is what we've got. So we're going to do it with this red to black, too. And just make sure that it works. All right, twist this on. No, nice twisted and we're gonna pull the heat shrink back over it like so all right so now we have two pieces of heat shrink now something that you want to do really quick is you don't want to take your voltmeter if you have one and you want to check these wires when you cut it on and press the switch or you can just go ahead and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go straight for the fire up and see if it works so kill switch Actually, you know what? Let's get a little bit better view of this. All right. So, like I said before, there's the shrink wrap. Boom, boom. Wires are tucked away up under there. And then, 
here's the button. So moment of truth, if we've done this right, I can press this button right here that's still kind of loose. I'm gonna have to tighten that. I can press it and it'll fire up. So three, two, voila, and we're running. So let me cut this off. All right, so now that we know that we're running right and that it works right here, we're actually gonna heat this up with the heat gun and then put a little tape around it and that should be it. So let me get the heat gun all ready. All right guys, I got the heat gun on. So we're gonna actually uh, just use it at low and wait for it to heat up for a second. And then once it heats up, we're gonna use it. So heat gun, you don't wanna put it like directly on it because it, it gets really hot right here. <laughs> That's really hot. You wanna kinda keep it away a little bit and then just kinda move in as needed. So let's uh, see, cause it's, uh, it's actually pretty warm now. So we're gonna hold the wire up here. And I'm just going to kind of slowly work around this thing. And as you can see it, it's going to start shrinking up. You want to try and get around the wire as best as you can. Don't be afraid to really get in there with it because the stuff just keeps shrinking. If you burn it up, you'll know when you burned it up. I promise. See, that's still kind of loose right there. So we're going to heat it up a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good on that one. So we're gonna move on to the next one. And like I said, you just wanna keep kind of, keep the heat to it, but also kind of move it around. You don't wanna just hold it in one spot too long. Otherwise you'll kind of mess your heat shrink up and it'll just kind of kink up, puddle up and not do what it's supposed to. Alright, so that looks like it. Alright, so as you can tell now, they're both beautifully tucked away. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take and put, well it's still kind of hot. I'm going to take and put a little bit of tape right here where the actual twisted wires are. I'm going to put a little tape right on the ends, so just in case wire gets in there's an added layer of protection and then we'll just tuck these wires away and uh, we'll be done these right over where those wires are now like I said this you actually don't have to do this this for me is just more of a uh, safety precaution giving it like that extra little layer of I guess security of it rubbing or bouncing around because a lot of wires rub and bounce around in here and just i don't know it helps me feel a little bit better that i feel like it's more secure i guess like i said and sometimes we'll go right like this all right i have installed a fresh kill switch so I'm gonna tidy up here a little bit and we'll give it one more start. And that should be the end of the video. All right guys, so uh, we finally finished installing this here kill switch. I hope that I try to make it as simple as possible for you guys. Uh, sometimes it's not as easy. I mean, it's literally two bolts to bolt it on the bar. I press the two pieces together, find your power and your negative, which are those two wires as I was talking about. You might wanna figure out which one has power, which one is ne doesn't because of the closed loop. Either way, it doesn't really matter because they loop over. If you're picky about it, you're picky about it. You wire in the two wires together and you're done. 
Now, if you do have a stock kill switch on your bike, your stock kill switch is gonna have a kill switch and start switch on it more than likely. And in that case, you wanna take the start switch and make a start switch and a kill switch and make a kill switch. Or say you just want a kill switch, make just a kill switch. And usually if you're doing that, you probably have the means of starting the bike by a Kickstarter. You don't electric start it. So there's that. Also, you have the opportunity to, if you have just a start button, kill your kill switch if you have a set of keys. So I have a set of keys. I use mine to power it off. So I literally just rewired it as a new start switch. And so here you go. Without further ado, one more time. Let me make sure I'm in neutral. I am in neutral. I mean, my tire's up against the pole anyways, but. There you go, ladies and gents. There is how to wire in a kill switch. Now, if you like this video, I please ask you to uh, subscribe and like to my channel. I am gonna try and keep doing this as best as I can, and I'm all the way out there to help you guys. So, uh, if you need anything, if there's a question that I can answer, or maybe someone down in the comments can answer it for me if I don't get to it first, uh, please leave a like, share, and subscribe, like I said before, and uh, that's it. Really deuces.